сегодня хотела поговорить о путешествии в космос на большие расстояния, в другие галактики, в другие концы Вселенной. А с известным ученым, а изобретателем варп-двигателя Мигелем Малькубьерем. Мы сейчас попытаемся получить ответы на многие аспекты его изобретения. Мигель, ты меня слышишь? Привет! Мигель, я очень рада тебя видеть. А, у меня ряд вопросов есть к тебе. Скажи, пожалуйста, вот ты являешься изобретателем а, варп-двигателя. А в чем вот уникальность твоего изобретения? И почему твое изобретение является самым лучшим предложением а, для нынешней космонавтики? There's no limit to the speed at which you can do that. Of course, you're not actually moving yourself. Space is expanding and contracting. Space is doing all the work. You're not doing it yourself. So that's the idea of the work right now. How do you do that? With a machine, that's a totally different question. But, but the geometry is very simple to, to design. And of course, what you need to do is you need to then use the equations of relativity to see how you produce this geometry. And that is what requires the anti-gravity. But the model of, of expansion and contraction is actually very simple. And that's the basic idea of the work drive. Гель, мне нравится твое изобретение. Вот скажи, пожалуйста, можно его использовать при путешествии в нашей Солнечной системе, например, чтобы достичь Марса? Yeah, I think uh, traveling the solar system is actually quite possible and very feasible. We don't need a warp drive to travel in the solar system, it's very small. So you can travel to Mars, even today we can send probes to Mars that take about nine months to get there. We haven't been able to send people, but I'm sure we will be able to send people sometime in the next 20 or 30 years. It doesn't sound very difficult, all the science, all the basic science is known. That is really, really just a technological problem, and we just need to have uh, to spend the money to do it. So it's 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 an expensive thing to do, but I think it's something that will be done. I think the technology will advance to that point in the next few decades. We will certainly send people to Mars. We will be able to colonize Mars. Mars is probably the ideal place to colonize because it's it's a bit smaller than Earth, but it has an atmosphere. The atmosphere is not very dense, but you can always improve on that. And the temperatures are cold, but not terribly cold. So it's a place where we can certainly colonize, and I'm pretty sure we will do it. And I would expect that we will be doing it. We will do it in this century, sometime in the 21st century. Но тем не менее, как ты считаешь, все-таки человечество стоит колонизировать Марс и с помощью твоего двигателя отправиться к другим галактикам, другим солнечным системам? I think we should build a colony on Mars. That's what we have close. I mean, it's, it's in the next few decades or even in the next century or so, or even two centuries, it's the only place we can really get to. And relatively easily, that's Mars, well, the moon, but, but Mars is bigger and, and has, it's much more interesting. So I think we should go there. I think it's a nice and important goal for the human species. We should learn how to travel in space, learn how to use the resources of space. And there's asteroids and there's lots of resources out there, material resources, so we should really learn to do it. Eventually, we also need to, to learn to do that for our own, our own survival, right? I mean, the Earth can be hit by an asteroid sometime in the future, so we better learn how to stop them and avoid uh, asteroid collisions. Eventually, sometime in the far future, the Earth will become very small for us and, and it will probably become uninhabitable, so we should really learn to move to other planets. It's not something that's urgent. The Earth will be here for millions of years, but I think we, we are now at the point where we can start doing that. And also, I think it's important the Earth is the only planet we know that has life, that's as far as we know. There's probably life somewhere else in the universe, but not in their solar system. We haven't found any life in their solar system. So I think, in a sense, it's, it's our responsibility to take life to other places that have no life today. I think that's something we should really do. 
And I think would be a, that would be an interesting and important goal for, for humanity. Нет, у меня возник вопрос. Давай представим ситуацию. Россия решила построить ворон двигатель. Я приглашаю Роскосмос, там правительство России, президент наш Вадим Владимирович Путин, и говорит, Мигель, вот тебе вся техническая база необходимая, вот тебе все необходимые финансы, поддержка политическая. Создай нам варм двигатель. Скажи, пожалуйста, вот сколько по времени займет создание варм двигателя и насколько это реально? Uh, I mean, today, even if they gave you a lot of money, there's no way to know how much longer it'll take because of the problem that, that I mentioned before. We don't have anti-gravity; it might not exist. At the moment, it's a problem of fundamental physics. It's not just a, a problem of money. I mean, building a warp drive today is not is not about money; it's about fundamental physics, and that might turn out not to be possible to solve. So, even with lots of money, it might take forever. Uh, so, I, I would say that today. It would not be a good idea for any government or any space agency to spend a lot of money into warp drive research. My suggestion would be to spend money into most uh, more ordinary propulsion methods like ion engines and things that we know how to build and we know will work. So that would be my, my proposal to governments. Today is really, even if they gave millions of dollars for, for warp track, it might not work because we don't have the anti-gravity. So it, it simply might not work at all. Мигер, не буду этим больше мучить. У меня последний к тебе вопрос а, о твоей мечте. Вот как ты видишь вар двигатель? Каким ты его видишь и когда? My, my dream would be that we will discover some form of anti-gravity sometime this century and we will learn how to use it. And maybe if that happens, we'll learn how to build a warp drive maybe in 200 years or something like that. That would be my dream. I don't think, I'm not sure it will happen, but that would be my dream. And if we can actually build it, then I think we should immediately use it to go outside our solar system and go and see other places in the, in the galaxy. But I think it's very difficult that we will find intelligent life in our solar system. It's almost certainly that we're alone in our solar system. But I'm pretty sure that in our galaxy there's probably thousands or maybe millions of other intelligent species. And we should really meet them and see what they've learned about the universe and what's their physics like and their math like and their art and their music, if they have music. <laughs> and, and I think that would be extremely important to meet other intelligent species. So my dream would be that we build it, we find out how to make it work in a couple of hundred years and we go out Мигер, uh, спасибо тебе огромное за интересные ответы на мои вопросы. Я желаю тебе успеха в твоей научной деятельности и хочу поблагодарить тебя за твое очень важное изобретение для всего человечества. Пока.